and now they're locked up in a room in fear because they weren't expecting what they saw. It's amazing to me that Jesus was with them for three years and you would have thought he prepared them for his death. He told them constantly what was to come. But yet in this hour, here the disciples who walked with Jesus for three years, who talked with Jesus for three years, who saw the miracles of God for three years, and now they're locked behind closed doors. In fear, the Bible says, because of an experience. Hmm. I wonder how many of us today are locked behind closed doors because of past experience. We're too afraid to go out. We're too fearful to go out because this experience is too much for us. So we'll just hide behind a closed door because we don't want to deal with what we think we might be faced with. Can anybody in here say amen? I don't know about you, but I know what it feels like to be locked behind a closed door. If it's nothing but a closed door in your mind thinking you can't get out of something because you're so bound to that thing. I know what it feels like to be in prison and I've never been in a physical prison but I've been in some spiritual prisons before. I've been in some bondage before. Locked behind a closed door because of fear of the enemy. I wish I had time to preach this this morning because there are so many people and there are some of you sitting here right now locked behind your closed door. Because of a past experience. And some of us might want to ridicule the disciples because we say, you should have known. He told you that he was going to have to die a sinner's death. You should have known immediately when he died that he was going to be resurrected. But let me tell you something. There are some things that we go through that are so traumatic that it will shake the very core of your foundation. You think you that bad and you think you that spiritual. You just wait for the next test. There will be something that will come that will shake the very foundations of what you believe. I know you've seen the miracle of God. You've experienced the miracles of God. You experience God speaking over your food and making enough to stretch that you might have enough to eat for the rest of the week. Is there anybody here that ever thought they were going to run out of food but somehow God got over it and he breathed over that thing and before you knew it, at the end of the week, you were picking up 12 boxes because when God gets in the middle of something, he doesn't just give you enough. He gives you more than enough. That's what kind of God we serve. We serve a God who's more than enough. So we've experienced the miracles of God. And we've seen God heal people. We've seen God heal people on our job. We've seen God heal people in our community. And yet we've seen God heal people in our family. Uh, Let me take you in a step further. We've seen God heal us. I wish I had some folks that were sick before. And God reached down from heaven and touched your body and healed you. And you begin to sing a song, I know him as a healer. It's something about when God does something personal for you. There's a different kind of praise that come out of you because this is personal. This is not secondhand information. This is not something somebody told me, but this is something I know he did for me. And when you know it, you know it. And so this is what the disciples experienced every day of walking with Jesus and talking with Jesus. Could you imagine spending your days with the Father? Could you imagine spending your days with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ? Seeing him just touch people and they rise up from the dead. Seeing him call forth some things. Seeing him just speak into the heavens and things begin to happen. Seeing him take the fear of God, fear of the enemy out of you and you're able to follow him. This is what they experienced. But yet, in this time, because of the events over the last three days, 
They're locked in a room behind closed doors in fear. I don't know about you, but there's somebody here that these last three days have been the most hellish three days on earth for you. These last three days have been the most trying time in your life. And you've just decided I'm going to lock myself behind closed doors. I just want to tell you, you might have went through that situation on Friday. You might have went through that situation on Saturday. But I'm here to tell you today it's Sunday. Day. And today represents the resurrection power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, I might have been down on Friday. I might have been depressed on Saturday. But today is resurrection day. God is getting ready to speak to me. I wish I had about three praisers. Who understands what this day means. This is not just an ordinary day. But it means that God got up with all power in his hands. I wish I had some praisers. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He rose. I'm here today because he rose. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I got to praise him. I would be dead today, but he rose. Oh, somebody ought to praise God. My God. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I can't help it, y'all. I can't help it, y'all. He's been too good to me. He brought me up out of a pit. You don't know like I know. I should be in the grave today. I should be a statistic today. You're looking at somebody. My God, my God. I'm going to keep moving, but it's your testimony. Can't nobody tell you what God has done for you. Black, you know what God has done for you. Is there anybody here that's thankful? For what he's done for you. You so thankful you can't even sit down. You so thankful you can't even think straight. It's this resurrection power that we're talking about today. It's this resurrection power that won't even let me go any further. It is this resurrection power of God. Glory! Glory! Thank you, Jesus. Come on and worship him. on and worship him if I don't say another word he's already said everything thank you Jesus come on and worship him worship your God Jesus got up out of the grave glory that we might get up out of our graves. Come on and worship him today. Glory, glory, glory. Worship him, worship him, worship him. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right in the midst of your sin. He looked through the future. And he saw us. When he hung on that cross. Thank you, Jesus. And when it got to be too much for him. Thank you, Jesus. Image of you start flashing past his mind. Being locked in chains and in bondage. Getting ready to go to a devil's hell. And so he held back his head. And he stayed on that cross. He 
She says, I got to go. I got to go. I got to stay here. Because my blood has to deliver them off of drugs. I got to stay on this cross. I got to let them put this crown of thorns on my head. Because I got to renew somebody's mind. And the Bible said when they put the crown of thorns on his head. Blood began to run down. And the Bible said he bled. So that you wouldn't lose your mind. Come on somebody praise him. He says I got to stay on this cross. Because they're going to need to know. That you can be persecuted. And still come out with the victory. That's what it was all about. Oh the cross. The cross. The cross. Looked like defeat. And some of you right now. You're on a cross. And it looks like you're getting ready to be defeated. And people are laughing at you. And people are mocking you. Saying you serve that God. You gave up everything for that God. And they're looking at you on a cross. On this wooden cross. They're looking at you. Hanging. See, the cross wasn't pretty. The cross didn't have a purple robe on it. It was a wooden cross that they nailed our Savior to. My God. The Bible says they nailed his hands to the cross. The Bible said they nailed his feet to a wooden cross. And the Bible said for hours he hung there with criminals to die the worst death that he could. At any given moment, he could have said enough is enough. I'm getting down at this cross. And over 10,000 angels would have rushed to his aid to come get him and take him back to a home in glory. I can imagine our Savior saying this is painful. This is hard. My God, my father has forsaken me in the worst hour of my life. He looks up and he says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I've come to talk to somebody who's feeling forsaken today. I come to talk to somebody who feels like they've been left behind. Your cross is not your defeat. Glory. But your cross is going to be a symbol of your victory. Come on, somebody. Your cross. is going to be a symbol of your victory.